Hey, this is just a little video to explain to you how to do some of the things in the latest lab, which is the Earthquake Lab. And so what I have here is, let's make this a little bit bigger, is some of the figures. <clears throat> and what these are, these are seismograms of an earthquake. And you can see there's three of them, one from a seismic station called LTN, another one from GOIL, and another one from POW. So it's three different uh, seismic stations, three different, uh, three different uh, seismograms. And you can see on here that there are uh, P waves and S waves. So the P wave is the first to arrive, S wave is the second to arrive. And this one also has P waves and S waves. This one also has P waves and S waves. And so what you have to do is first of all, figure out what the difference in arrival time is between the P waves and S waves. And to do that, you have to just measure the amount of time that's elapsed between when this wave hit and this wave hit. And that is on this scale right up here. This shows time in seconds. And so I'm gonna use a little box here uh, to see if this will work. Come on. Box. Oh, okay, there, there was a box. All right, so I'm going to move this box up. I'm going to line up one edge of it here with that edge. I'm going to slide this up like that. And basically going to be able to read off then here how many seconds that is. So it looks like about one, two, three, four, you know, between four and five seconds. So you have to figure out what, you know, what, amount that is. Uh, and then you're going to do the same thing with this one here. You're going to measure sort of from here to here and see how many seconds that is. And same thing down here. Then you're going to go down to this box right over here. And what you're going to try to do there is you're going to set one end. Uh, you're going to try to uh, figure out what the distance is using this uh, travel time curve here. So if you look at this, uh, this is, you know, five, five seconds is right there. This is supposed to be 10 seconds. This is 15 seconds and this is 20 seconds. For some reason, these uh, digits didn't print out there, but it should be there. Uh, so now let's say it was 7.2 seconds. Then we'd set this right there. So we're going, 7.256, 7.2 down here, hitting the line exactly, going over here, and then you read off how many kilometers away the uh, earthquake was from that particular location. So this is somewhere between 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So between 50 and 60, closer to 60. So what would that be? 68, 69, I mean, 58 or 59, somewhere around in there. So you use this diagram here to determine how far away the earthquake is from, uh, from your seismic station. Then what you got to do is you've got to go to this screen right over here. You got to go to this uh, piece of paper and you're going to draw three circles and the circles have to have a radius that corresponds to the distance from that seismic station. So if LTN had a distance of 60 kilometers, then you would draw uh, a circle around LTN with a radius of 60 kilometers. There's a scale right here. This is the scale in kilometers. So that's the one you want to use. Uh, I can kind of demonstrate this, I think, by putting a, well, let's move an oval, but let's see if we can make it a circle kind of like that, and then move it uh, over here. So it's like, we can change this. Actually, let me change it this way, don't you? So if that, let's say, so if we wanted it to be, let's say 60, we would probably, Sorry for all of that. So here. 
every time I move it, it uh, readjusts. So. So that's about 60 right there, radius of 60. Uh, as you can see, actually, you could measure the whole thing and cut it in half. So, right, so that'd be 120, so half of that 60. So then you would put that over the LTM and you figure, okay, it's somewhere on that circle. And then you draw two more circles around GOIL and POW with the appropriate radii of those and if you've done everything right they should intersect at one location and then you read off the latitude over here and the longitude over here of that particular spot keeping in mind that in the western hemisphere longitude is increasing to the left on these diagrams so uh, that's how you do that part and then the last part here uh, this actually has to do with using this nomogram. And this uh, nomogram is a very clever little graphical device. And so what you're looking at here is the difference in arrival time of PNS waves on this side. And you're looking at the height of the waves or amplitude of the waves on this side. So if you determined, let's say that, I don't need to use a straight line here. So if you determined that, let's say, it was uh, 50 seconds between the P wave and S wave, and it had a deflection of a half a millimeter. Then it crosses the middle right here, and that's where you read off the magnitude. So that would be about a four point something here, 4.4 maybe. Uh, so you just adjust this up. So the example they give you here is one that's at about 21 or so, and about 25 on this side and it crosses at about 5.0 right there. So you can see how that works. Very clever little device for calculating the magnitude uh, of an earthquake. All right, thank you very much.